And Kenzie's title for her oral presentation is The Rising Awareness for Extreme Ocean Warming, Analyzing Marine Heat Waves and Climate Models. The floor is yours. Hello everyone and thank you for listening. My name is Kenzie Kliss and this summer I have been working on a project with my mentors Gustavo and Anna in which I have titled the Rising Awareness for Extreme Ocean Warming, Analyzing Marine Heat Waves in Climate Models. So before I begin, I would just like to say thank you to NCAR for making all of this possible this summer. I appreciate you for letting us use all the many facilities. It truly has broadened our horizons. Next, I would like to thank Jerry for being an amazing supervisor. You've been there for us since day one, and I appreciate all of your efforts for making us feel comfortable. More importantly, thank you for believing in us. Next, Gustavo and Anna, thank you for mentoring me and allowing me to benefit from all of your experience. Working with the both of you has truly opened my eyes on my future and allowed me to see the different horizons this world has to offer, so thank you. Next, I would like to thank my family and my friends for always supporting me and encouraging me to follow my dreams. So without further ado, what drives a marine heat wave? So marine heat waves are prolonged periods of anomalously warm waters at a specific location. So when you think about like all the coral bleaching that's been happening around the world, that's due to marine heat waves. Now the exact sea surface temperature that constitutes a marine heat wave varies worldwide based on ocean temperatures exceeding a threshold. So marine heat waves are caused by a combination of local oceanic and atmospheric processes in which is depicted in this figure. So when we have the weakened North Pacific high winds, they cause a reduced cloud cover, which contributes to the mixed layer heating up by the sun. Therefore, there's less evaporative cooling at the surface and the thin layer heats up a lot easier. But keep in mind that there's many factors that can go into creating a marine heat wave, and it gets very complex depending on location and the time of year. So if you'd like to learn more, you can visit the Hobday et al. article. So it's important to study marine heat waves because not only do they have negative, long, and short-term effects on ecosystems, such as the kelp forest or the coral bleaching events that I just mentioned, or fisheries as well, they also are becoming alarmingly more frequent and more intense as time goes on. So within each marine heat wave event, there are numerous properties to analyze. For my project, I am analyzing the category of these events. So when looking at the figure, first plotted, the line at the bottom is the climatology. Following the climatology would be the sea surface temperature that's plotted along a defined threshold. And each specific category is determined by how far above the 90th percentile threshold an event reaches. So as you can see, we're able to quantify different properties within marine heat waves, such as the duration, the intensity, number of events, et cetera. So we are able to do this by using the detect algorithm that was created by Eric Oliver. It's also important to note in this figure that there, this is just one small section of the time series. It actually is very large and can have different cold spells as well in the, within the ocean. The whole ocean is not just warming as a whole, but there's also cold spells to be analyzed. This picture is just depicting the different categories. So the yellow would be moderate, followed by strong, severe, and then extreme. So the area that I am analyzing for my project is in Western Australia. This is a map of an example of what a marine heat wave looks like specifically on a map. So during this event in 2011, the temperatures rose three degrees above normal. So the kelp forests and the fisheries and coral reefs still haven't even recovered from this event in 2011. And since this has happened, a vigorous effort has been made to understand the concepts within marine heat waves because they're just alarmingly destructing many things. So the white dot specifically on this map is where I extracted my time series from for the project. Also what I mentioned earlier about the cold spells, you can visualize it right here too. So it's important to know. So 
When looking at the data sets that we used, we used one observational data set and one model ensemble output. The observational data set that we used is the NOAA optimal interpolated sea surface temperature and the model, or we remapped the observations to the lens two grid. And the, for the, the model output that we used is showing 100 members a 100 member time series in grid for each of the members within the large ensemble. So 50 of the members are under a CMIP6 forcing and 50 of the members are under an SMBB forcing. They each have different initial conditions and different initial forcings which con contribute to them. So in other words, I won't get into more detail about those, but you can see that the correlation between the 100 members is a lot stronger than the correlation with the observations. So it's also important to note that the model that we were using was fully coupled, so the time doesn't necessarily have to align with our specific period because the model is fully running, or yeah, fully running. So to continue, we compared the statistics of the observed marine heat waves to the simulated marine heat waves in the model. So first we analyzed the observations at the point in the previous slide that I mentioned, and we observed that they had 44 moderate events, 17 strong events, one severe event, and one extreme event. And this is over a span of 32 years in which we used 1982 to 2014. So these values are exactly what we see in the real world. This is what actually happened. So now what we wanna do is see how our model with the different ensembles sample the same exact set of data. For, so for example, do they have the same number of events? Do they just give us the similar results? And from viewing the statistics of the CMIP-6, we can see that this is the entire time series for the individual members, and none of the members are modeling the amount of marine heat waves that we're seeing in the real world. And this is significant because we ultimately want the model to align with the observations. So in other words, they don't align or compare with the observations, and we are evaluating the model's capability to simulate these heat waves, so this is very significant. The second block is showing a different set of 50 members that have different forcings, and they behave roughly similar to the CMIP-6 forcing. And to further prove that, I also included the mean of the CMIP-6 ensemble members and the mean of the SMBB ensemble members to show that they have relatively similar statistical properties. And when looking at the overall result, you have, or member 100 looks like it could almost compare to the OBS, but in reality, the moderate events does not align at all. It also doesn't include any severe or extreme events, so it's really not comparable in any way still. This is important because what we are visualizing is that the models that we are using are underestimating the amount of marine heat waves that we see in the real world. And also when looking at the other bars within the result, you can see that a lot of them don't even include severe or extreme. So overall, the model is pretty far off from where it needs to be. So in summary, marine heat waves are extremely devastating for our ecosystems, and our climate models, Lens2 for, for instance, is currently underestimating the amount of marine heat waves that we see in the real world. Marine heat waves is a very new study of science that we are just now starting to dig into, so it's good to see some people putting in effort for the marine heat wave research, but we have a long way to go, and that's okay. So in the future, I would like to broaden the region and for example, maybe the area that was outlined in the box in the previous slide, and that might help um, get better agreement with the observations that we were seeing. We were looking at a singular point in the ocean, so it's very different than looking at a, a whole region. And then once, once the observations are in better agreement with the models, we know that we can move forward and start to look into the future to better prepare people and our ecosystems for these disastrous events. And then in addition to that, I would also like to analyze other properties such as the intensity or the duration 
maybe with less members or the same amount of members, but either way, 100 members was a lot to analyze too. So if you're interested in learning more about marine heat waves, the QR code attached is a link that will take you to the full GitHub repository to see the analysis I've done for this summer. In addition to the single point that I have presented about, there was also four other case study events that you are more than welcome to check out with different areas. Thank you for listening and I am open for questions. Again, for those joining us online, if you would like to ask Kenzie a question, you can do so through Slido, which is on the webpage that you are watching us uh, from right now. Uh, any questions from the audience? Thank you so much for your presentation. It was great. Um, I just had a question about, maybe a bit, a bit more general question. Um, so you looked at marine heat waves in like the Australia region. Mm -hmm. Um, so what regions are we seeing this happen? Like, is it more, um, is it more in the warmer regions like Australia? Could it be possible to see something like this in the Arctic happen? Um, can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. So there's a few other regions that are like being analyzed currently. And there's like the North Pacific, the Caribbean, as well as like Australia as a whole. So Typically, like it can happen pretty much anywhere around the world. There's actually a projection that the entire ocean will be at a state of marine heat waves by 2100. So that's why there's such an urgency to learn more about marine heat waves because they are growing drastically for how and where they can occur. Thank you. Yeah. So, Kenzie, if you go back a few slides to the plot with all 100 members oh. on. Yes. Now, go back one more. Keep going. Right. So, out of the 100 members, there's one with a much larger SST than the others. So, it might be interesting if you analyze that one case to find out, if you could, why that SST is larger than uh, all the others. Yeah, sure. That's definitely a good point because I was just talking to my mentors about that a couple days ago. That would be something interesting to analyze because it's definitely an outlier for the rest of the data, but unfortunately we didn't get a chance to look further into it. Any other questions? So it was last year that we had the uh, heat wave in the Pacific Northwest. Would you say that that was a moderate heat wave or a severe? What, what scale would you put that on? So if you were to look at the GitHub repository that I have, I actually did analyze that location. So there's a whole bunch of information about that as well. But it did, ex it did exceed the, the moderate. But it, I don't think it got up to the extreme event. But the GitHub repository will lead you more towards information about that. Uh, just, a, I guess, like, more of a clarification. So yeah. for it was four times the threshold. So that's like four times the 90th percentile. Okay, to make it an extreme event. Wow. Yeah, correct. So like the category, it's categorized by how far above the 90th percentile threshold it is. Wow. Ooh. Okay, that's got to be a pretty intense event. Thank you. Yeah, correct. And they're becoming more intense and more frequent as time goes on. That's why there's such an urgency to understand marine heat waves. <laughs> Um, nice presentation, Kinsey. Um, I just kind of want to ask, I mean, do you have kind of like an explanation for why the climate um, models are currently underestimating um, the marine heat waves? Well, there's a whole bunch of different models to look at. This is just one specifically. And I, I would say it's just because marine heat waves is a very new topic. So we're all still trying to figure out how to detect, how to categorize, how to identify these marine heat wave events. So I think it's just the beginning of the research for marine heat waves as a whole. So we just have a long way to go. Um, okay. Um, then do you think like adding some probably new features or other parameters to like the model can kind of like help um, increase the efficiency and um, even like the ability to kind of like um, 
predict things more because I'm kind of like thinking there are probably a lot of things that affect um, sea surface temperature itself. Um, so probably instead of like sea surface temperature itself as like the main like um, feature itself, what about um, probably decomposing it, decomposing it a bit and looking at those different features that affect it and probably that could like make the model better. Yeah, just thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely think you're onto something there. That's why for my future research, I wanted to analyze a broader region than just the point because maybe the larger area will have a better agreement with the observations. You know, like there's many different factors that can lead to the observations agreeing with the model a little bit better. Maybe they'll run different. So there's a whole different, there's many different ways that we can analyze the marine heat waves. So maybe broadening the region will create a better agreement for the models in the future. Okay, one last one. Uh, okay. <laughs> what did you kind of like find um, most interesting about like um, the project and what did you have to kind of like learn um, to kind of like achieve this? Yeah. Yeah, so I thought the most interesting part or part about marine heat waves was that coral bleaching is due to marine heat waves. Like not a lot of people know that and it's pretty significant. You know, a lot of people know about the coral bleaching that's been happening. So I thought that was really interesting to learn when reading through all the papers and that helped really create additional motivation to wanting to, you know, create a way to be able to analyze and detect these marine heat waves. I also thought it was interesting to learn about the different ways that we can analyze marine heat waves. So like, for example, we just did the categories, but there you can also look at the duration, the intensity, like the relative intensity. Like there's a whole bunch of different properties to look at. So I think I just got the basics of marine heat waves during this internship, and I'm like really excited to move forward with that because there's a lot of different things to analyze. Kenzie, I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, in that region of Western Australia, off the western coast of Australia, since 2011, do you know if there have been uh, other extreme events that have happened? Nothing as big as this one. Okay. Yeah, this was like very significant. This was one of the events that actually occurred that like created the very like strong spike of like, we need to figure this out. Gotcha. Yeah, and also there was one off the coast of um, California as well that was a huge deal known as like the blob. So that was like a huge start for marine heat waves as a whole. But this one was just very significant as for marine heat wave discoveries. Thank you, great yeah. job.